at uh, It's Martini Time by the Reverend Horton Heat. This starts out in um, sort of a augmented chord type of pattern. We'd be up here um, on this sort of C sharp augmented triad. So that's the 11th fret on the D string then the 10th fret on the next two strings. Okay, and then he catches this 12th fret on the B string, so it's like a little sweep. Okay, and then, then we're just sliding into this double stop, so that would be from the um, 10th to 11th fret on the B string, and then you're barring on that third string also. So, so far what we have is this. Okay, and then it takes that pattern and moves it down exactly two frets. So you end up with something like this. Okay, and then um, after it does that a couple times, it goes up here to 12th position. And you play that B note, and then F sharp, back to the B, F, E. Okay, and then we're doing this little A triad. The It's Martini time. Okay, so, so far we have... high A at the 17th fret and slide out. Okay, and then we're on the, um, the I guess it would be the verse riff. So that's pretty cool. That's um, just alternating between a picked note on the sixth string and then using your middle finger um, to pick the A string. And the pattern is pretty simple. We're just playing A, G, F sharp, F, and alternating to that open A. actual singing starts in the verse, he just kind of pumps that A. And then sort of in between stanzas, he does the... Then at the end of the, um, the verse, right before the chorus, it goes A, C sharp, D, D, uh, D sharp, so you're just kind of chromatically walking from C sharp to E up here. A, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Okay, and then there's this little A6. That's just A, C sharp, F sharp. Okay, and then it goes back to the verse again. Um, and then you play through that whole sequence again. Go to this A6. Okay, and then it's going to go to the chorus, which is a D9, C9, B flat 9. Okay, and then we have um, what it sounds like to me is E flat, 
7, um, F sharp 7, B7, E7, and then back to the After the second chorus, um, it goes to this sort of verse riff again. And then starts the solo. So that first lick, what it sounds like to me... is something like that. Um, so all that is is we're hammering from the C, uh, G sharp rather to the A on the uh, sixth string, and then I'm gonna catch that fifth string with the middle finger. Okay, and then we're gonna take that pattern and move it down a fret and down a string. So we'll be hammering from C to C sharp, and then playing the open D, with the middle finger. Okay, and then we're gonna be going to the F sharp on the fourth string and hammer into that G note and then playing the open G with the middle finger. So we have and goes back down to the uh, C sharp and C. So kind of what he's doing there is just sort of outlining this A7 by coming in from a half step below and using the open strings to kind of drone against that. Okay, and then uh, let's see what we have. Then you have this cool sort of A6 type of arpeggio lick. Which sounds kind of like that to me. It sounds like there's a punch in, or something. There's something kind of weird when you slow it down. But it sounds like he's going for something basically like that. So that's... um. So we're just hammering from the E to the F sharp, and then to the A note on the 10th fret. Okay, and then we're kind of sliding from this uh, minor to major third, and then pick the open string, and then pull off from the C sharp to the E. Listen to that slowly. And then we're doing this. Hammer from 9 to 11. E to F sharp and then A. Then that high A. So watch that whole thing slow. At least that's what it sounds like to me. So, so far, the solo we have this. Then back to this. And then he goes to this cool little rockabilly lick. So let's look at that. So we have um, just an A. Then this A7 at uh, the eighth position, which is the E, G, and C sharp notes. Okay, and then we're on this. So what that is, is um, that's the C note on the fourth string, and then we have the E note on the third string, F sharp on the second string, and then then we have this D note. So 
I guess what that is would be like a D9, an inverted D9 chord. And we're just moving that up to what would be an E9. So we have. And then we're um, at the point of the solo where he goes back to that little It's Martini time, A major arpeggio. Okay, and then we go into this. Um, so it's so what that is, is we're kind of uh, sweeping up like an F arpeggio. So that's F, A, C. And then we're playing D, C, and then A, G, F sharp, F. So let's look at what we got in the solo so far. Then we're on this. Um, sounds kind of like that to me. It's it's just a flurry of notes, but this is how I play it. So we're we're playing A, B, C on the fourth string, and then chromatically go from the D to the E on the G string. Okay, and then we're gonna do that um, seven, eight, nine thing again. We're gonna do F sharp G A on the second string. Okay, and then C on the second string, 13th fret, and then D D sharp E. Okay, so that's uh, that's that lick. Then we're on this. That's just B flat D B flat D E then B flat E F. And you repeat that. that leave us yeah that's right and then we kind of do the thing that we did to the intro with that little augmented chord but this time instead of going down we go up so that's um, slowly that would be and then that's B, F sharp, B, G, G sharp, and then and that little A arpeggio, A, C sharp, and then A. So let's look at uh, let's look at what we got so far in the solo. We got. Um, That's pretty much it for It's Martini Time. Everything else from there on out is just basically repetition of what we did before. Um, the uh, outro just goes back to that thing that we did in the solo. And then it ends.
strings on this A6. That we also did earlier. So anyway, that's It's Martini time. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you'll share it with a friend. And um, I'm Harvey Massar signing off. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. Bye.